Hi everyone, I'm David Reeder and we are off deck. The Women's NCAA Championship is coming up next week in Indianapolis. Stanford women the big favorites, so we've got a couple of Stanford alums, notable Stanford alums with us today to preview the meet. Joining us is Olympic gold medalist Maya Dorado and 2014 NCAA champion Felicia Lee. Ladies, welcome to the show. How are you today? Hey, great. Doing great. Thanks for having us. Yeah, sure. It's going to be fun. Um, so first question, Pac-12s. Big performance for the Stanford ladies, winning pretty comfortably. Did any of that, any of those great swims surprise you guys? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I was actually texting Maya a lot during the meet. Um, and, yeah, I think some of the swims are really surprising at, at how fast they are right now. I think historically we haven't been quite that fast at Pac-12s and kind of a lot faster at NCAAs, but it was amazing to watch. Maya? Yeah, I think Pac-12s traditionally, you know, we see all of the the crazy swims the week before and some people get really amped for conference and Pac-12s generally is a little a, a little slower, but I think the schools always deliver at NCAAs, so we're really excited to see what that means for how they do in a couple weeks. Right. For sure. I think the most surprising moment for me and maybe everyone, uh, when Allie Howe went 49-6 in the 100 back, where'd that come from? Oh, oh my gosh. <laughs> you know, Allie's you a great <laughs> swimmer, and when she finds her mojo, um, there's really no stopping her. So it was just, I mean, it was amazing to watch. Um, and I'm not going to say anybody called that beforehand, but, um, you know, she's she's a really great backstroker. So it's just exciting to see her kind of develop a little bit more and hit her stride. Uh, yeah, I mean, I think... You know, she, I think she had set out that goal for herself in the beginning of the season, and um, just through the year, she's a junior now, she's just gained more and more confidence every year, and it's really paid off, and, and she had those high goals and was just able to put it all together for one just outrageous swim, and, and I mean, Maya and I trained with her for, what, two years, and we've seen it every day, so have her kind of come through on that is truly special. Yeah. Um, you both know Natalie Coughlin pretty well, so to see her final American record go down, that had to be kind of weird, too. <laughs> oh, I didn't know that was her last one on the books. Yeah, but, her last yeah, I remember one. watching those NCAAs and Pac-12s when she was just so far ahead of her time and putting out these amazing swims, so to, to know that Allie Howe just broke that is really surreal and exciting. Definitely. I mean, it also just, like, breaks that ceiling for... For other other people to hopefully hit that 49 because it was just like such a magical yeah. number for so long that um, to see someone like Ali, you know Ali just broke it by a massive amount for swimming you know so it, it'll be an exciting couple of years to see that event progress yeah it's gonna happen quick because everyone was right there on that uh, 50.0 flea what was your best time <laughs> uh, I think like 50.7 I don't even remember and back then like in 2014 I got third and if you look now at the psych sheets like that's not even top eight. <laughs> yeah. This year's going to be pretty fast. Uh, we, we can get to that in a minute. But there were some really, really fast times on that uh, psych sheet. A couple other things from uh, Pac-12s. Uh, Leah Neal got to swim the anchor leg, her last relay, her last Pac-12s, her first Pac-12 title. What did you guys think when you saw that she was going last and she got to finish it out? Mm. Lee, you want to take that? <laughs> Um, you know, I think it's really special for Lee. I think she's always been a really great relay swimmer and kind of an anchor for us. Um, to have that as her, I didn't know it was her first Pac-12 title, but as her first Pac-12 title, I'm um, kind of at the last event for, for her final Pac-12s is probably, she probably didn't think too much about it, but watching it from, you know, afar, it's kind of a special thing. And um, she works so hard and deserves so much of it. And it's just been such a, a rock for the Stanford team, I think, this year and previous year. So, um, I don't know, Leah's a great swimmer and, and uh, just an all-around amazing person. So. Oh. Yeah, well, first Pac-12 team title, I should say. So first time that Stanford has won while she's been there. Uh, yeah. Oh, oh, right, right. Okay, there so. we go. I was like, <laughs> she won before. <laughs> she won something. <laughs> well, she, uh, yeah, she, she, she won on the uh, first two free relays, at least, uh, this meet, the American record. <laughs> yeah, oh my, my gosh. gosh. Um, but yeah, I mean, like a team, a Pac-12 team title, like that, that's an amazing thing. And I think when we were at Stanford, we only won like two of them. And so I think 
you know, this year is going to be great for, for uh, Stanford. And I think for Leah to end it on, on as a senior will be a very special, special year. Mm -hmm. So obviously you've got some Olympians on that team, people coming back from swimming really well this summer, Katie and Simone, the, 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 the biggest names, but also Leah. What mm -hmm. does it say about Greg and Tracy that they're already swimming so fast right now? I think it says a lot about um, Greg and Tracy, but also just about the team and that, you know, everybody talks about the Olymp post-Olympic blues and I didn't have to go through it because I wasn't swimming anymore, but I can see how it would be really hard to get up and motivate yourself after coming off of a summer like that. But I think it just speaks to how excited those girls are about being on the team and contributing to, um, to the Stanford program. And so that's what's able to motivate them after um, coming off such a high at the Olympics. So that's really cool to see and to see how much they care about it. Yeah. Definitely. And I think they've really helped to come back after the Olympics to like just raise the training standards at practice. And um, like Greg and Tracy kind of know what, what they're doing. They've been with the program for several years now and then it's paid off uh, in terms of recruiting and how well they've done in the last couple of years at NCAA. So I think they're doing a really great job of keeping them grounded and focused on that final, I guess, her, like that final me at NCAAs. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, this, this one mostly for Maya. But I want to talk about Ella and kind of the growth she's had as a swimmer over the past year, doing great at NCAAs, not, at great, not as great at Olympic trials, and then great at short course worlds, winning two medals there. So how, what did she take out of training with you guys, really, and from being part of the college team? I think Ella learned a lot about herself last year and just how much she's capable of. I think it was a big transition going from her um, – High school and club program where she had a ton of success and then coming to Stanford where the training was a little bit different and she adapted so well to it she had a lot of faith in the coaches um, and I think every time she gets out and swims she learns more and more and gets better and better and she's a really really tough racer um, and so it was a treat for me to be able to swim with her last year and it made me a lot better as a swimmer and um, it's really cool to see her kind of you know, maybe, I don't even know if the summer was a disappointment. Like, obviously, she wanted to make the team, but she's growing so much in short course and long course and learning every time she goes out and races. And so it's it's cool to see her improve every single time. Flea, you want to take that one? Uh, yeah, I mean, I think one thing I admire a lot about Ella is that she's not afraid to ask questions and constantly be curious and not afraid to kind of, like, insert herself into these situations where, you know, she might not have been the fastest swimmer in that heat, but she'll make herself the fastest swimmer. And, and like Maya said, she's just a great racer. She just, you know, steps up on a, steps up on the blocks and kind of is all in. Um, and I think that's something I really admire about her. Like even when she came as a freshman, and I think what were we like six years? We were like she was just like you know pretty aggressive in the way she was talking. And, and I really appreciate that she's like very honest and very open. And I think that's um, something that contributes a lot to the team atmosphere in a positive way. Yeah, one of the most patient racers I think you'll find, especially when she's next to Kathleen Baker. Uh, ne <laughs> never gives up in those 200 IMs, even though she's usually way behind. Nope. Um, well, Kathleen's a great swimmer, so. <laughs> yeah. So I wanted to ask about the gap between Pac-12s and NCAAs. Greg said that they weren't all the way tapered, which, you know, is, is pretty crazy considering how fast they swam. So what are these three weeks in between like until before they leave for Indianapolis? Oh gosh. The first <laughs> week after NCAA, after Pac-12 is like the worst week ever. <laughs> you're just like, dying you're in every fast. practice and you know you have to get your base back up, but it sucks. Um, so you just kind of have to grind it out, not worry about how you feel, put the work in mm -hmm. um, to make sure that you're able to make it through NCAAs, um, and then it gets fun in like the last, I don't know, for me it was like the last four days before the meet. Other people had a better taper time, but um, it's just excited, uh, and okay. I, I believe Greg. But... We were kind of the same, Maya. <laughs> <laughs> I wasn't directed yeah, but... at anyone in particular, but yeah, I trust them when he says they're not fully rested, and I think it's going to be really exciting for them in these next three weeks to kind of get even more dialed in and see what they can do. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I think there'll be a lot. Of, there's there's a lot of motivation going around that that group right now based on how well they did it at Pac-12. So I think these three weeks will fly by for them. Like, it it's just going to be a very exciting couple couple of weeks. Mm -hmm. Yeah. No, I'm sure. Um, so what's it like having 
the one and two teams in the country right now being Stanford and Cal? Because obviously, big rivalries, a lot of good friendships among swimmers on both teams. So, mm-hmm. what's that like if the two top two teams are Stanford and Cal, two you know very traditional rivals? <laughs> yeah. I mean, I think it's motivating because I think they're so close to us, just right across the bay. So, like, you come into practice knowing that, like, hey, the number two team is just, you know, a 40-minute drive away. Um, So it kind of helps bring that motivation. And it also kind of speaks to, like, the hotbed that the Bay Area is right now for swimming and and how successful both sides have uh, in the coaching staff. Um, And just kind of, I guess, the, the, the rivalry can bring out great, swims in each each team so um i feel like cal and stanford have been very traditionally in in the running at ncaa's and of course like georgia and uh, texas a&m but it's always nice knowing that we have a motivating factor not that far away from us yeah um, yeah sorry maya you yeah no cal's a great team and um you know i remember them watching win watching them win a couple of times during our career. And so it's nice to have Stanford in the mix now and with a really great shot um, to win. And I just hope they have fun competing in three weeks because NCAAs is a blast. Um, and I think it'll be even better knowing that you get to race one of your biggest rivals. Yeah. Yeah. It's a, they, they say it's a pretty good meet. Um, for Stanford, it's kind of a unique experience. Uh, Felicia, you actually told me about this, but you guys get, would get there a few days early to take exams. Is that correct? Uh, okay, so I don't, like, we get there as early as everybody else, but we just take exams um, prior to the meet, so when most teams just get there on a Sunday or whatever, Monday, uh, we'll do our, like, you know, swim and then schedule our exams, but I think this year, it's an off-cycle year, so they'll have dead week. Uh, yeah. No exams. Is that good? That means they have to study during the meet. Yeah, I think it's actually, <laughs> it's I mean, it, de- it depends on your exam schedule, but uh, yeah. it can go either way. I don't think it went very well for me when we had to do that. Why? Didn't do well in the exams or didn't sleep during the meet? I just didn't watch the lectures. I took the exam the next week, so not sure. I can't quite remember the grade I got, but it was probably not good. Oh, God. Kids, if you're watching this at home, go to class. Yeah. Especially, especially at Stanford. Yeah. Um, so you... It was one time. Well, fair enough, fair enough. Um, so both of you have swum in plenty of big meets over the years, national meets, international meets, a lot of them. What's so special about NCAAs? Mm. Um, I think it's like the clearest, um, the most defined team swimming experience that you'll have. Like, you know... At the Olympics, you're swimming, and at other international meets, like, you're swimming for the team, and you're trying to score medals or win medals for Team USA, but it's not quite as points-based or, like, quite so obvious. But at NCAAs, like, you have this really obvious um, expression of your contribution to the team and the team's success and the scoring points and making finals and being on relays, and that's so fun for swimmers. Like, you put all of this time and work and heart and your passion into the team and then to see everyone contribute um and do these amazing things that they didn't think they could do but doing it for the team it's the best feeling in the world yeah Yeah, i mean i think that like obviously a lot of international meets are like team meets because you're competing for team usa but um there's just no other instance that you will be constantly with a team so like you know they come in for preseason, they bond they train together they go to the training room together they eat together so it's like you're really like every day you're with your team and every day that goal of winning and civilize is like kind of out there because i don't know you kind of embody that as you go along uh, through your daily routines and so um you know with the international meets you're together with team usa for two or three weeks but for ncaa's you're together the entire year going through everything so i think that's a really special thing and um, that kind of just like embodies the entire like if you win this team championship like no matter if you're on the NCAA team or just made Pac-12s like it's an entire contribution of the entire year. Yeah. So you both been there as spectators before. Um, Flea, we have a great photo of you from Greensboro a couple years ago that I'm pretty sure you've seen. Um, so what, what what's that like, and how much are you guys looking forward to doing that again? It's like simultaneously really fun and incredibly stressful. I 
always much prefer to be the one in the water and being able to kind of control mm -hmm. what happens. And I get so stressed watching it when I can't do anything about it. But it'll be a great time. We have a lot of alumni coming and it'll be really fun to see everybody and kind of reunite and uh, get to get to cheer them on. Yeah, I mean, I would say like, like when I was competing at NCAA, I thought that was exhausting. And then when I went to go watch it and cheer for it, I don't think I've ever been more tired in my life. Um, mm -hmm. And I, I definitely put a lot of cheering energy into that, like thinking that like the louder I scream, like the faster they'll go, like which I know does not make any sense. But um, looking forward to this year, uh, we like Maya said, we have a lot of alumni coming out. I wasn't there the year that Maya went out, so and I haven't seen Maya in a while, so it'll be fun to see her again. Um, so I think just really looking forward to uh, maybe, I mean, I'm trying to scream as much as I did at Greensboro, but I have a client meeting the next week, so I need my voice, uh, so we'll see. <laughs> Fair enough. Um, if Stanford does win, what are you guys going to be feeling like, you know, because you were a part of that program for a long time. Obviously, two of the captains, Greg and Tracy, second year, and obviously Stanford hasn't won in a long time. So what would that mean to you guys to watch them win an NCAA championship? <laughs> oh. <laughs> uh, I mean, I don't cry a lot, but I'll probably cry. I think like um, when Greg and Tracy uh, overtook the program and even like our volunteer assistant coaches, um, Jordan, April and Joey have all seen his vision um, and kind of rebuilding the program to kind of what it was like in the 90s. And uh, it's taken from, oh my gosh, what were you doing? 2013 until now. And so to see that all uh, kind of all come together into uh, this chance, this opportunity that like Stanford does have in front of them. I mean, it's just like, it's, I can, I'm uh, very nostalgic based on like our conversations with Greg and Tracy when we were still building a program to now I like, probably just like ball, I don't know, cry, ball up in a ball, scream, I don't know, who knows. <laughs> don't, don't scream. <laughs> Yeah, I'll for sure cry. Um, getting to watch them, well, hopefully, knock on wood. I'm such a glass half empty person, so I never like to make these predictions. But um, were they to win, I would cry just knowing like all of the work that's been put in. Um, just what an amazing thing it's been that Greg and Tracy were able to do, and um, feel really lucky to have a small part in that. Yeah. It's going to yeah. be a fun meet, uh, no question about that. Real quick before we let you go, you guys miss swimming at all, ever? <laughs> uh, no, I mean, it's very soothing, and I'll get in occasionally and do like a thousand, and when I say occasionally, I mean like twice since I've been out. But You, you um, swam 2,000 that day in Atlanta, and you said that was the third time since Rio, so I'm just going to yeah, say that. Yeah, Maya. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. Um, no, it's it's fun to watch from afar and see the people doing well, but I do not have any inclination to yeah. get back into it. Yeah, I, I think I've gone like mm, less than eight times. Definitely like after trials, I did the Trans Tahoe really, which is really fun. Uh, but that was like a distance swim. Um, not your style. Felicia set a Nationals master record, though, so don't let okay, her be like, let's no, not I'm talk not about playing. that. The <laughs> <laughs> girl's um, going to meet. I think, like, occasionally, maybe, like, once every three or two, three weeks, just to, like, I, it is very soothing and very relaxing. It's nice to clear my thoughts. Um, and just, like, my joints are really bad to do, like, land things, so I'm trying to, like, stay in shape. <laughs> it's important, but, you know, it's all right. You, swam, you guys both swam for a very long time, two years post-college, so... We'll, we'll give you a break for now, but you know, not not forever. Till, you know, not until <laughs> Masters comes calling, right? Yeah. Oh, I don't know about that. <laughs> well, yeah. uh, Maya, Felicia, thanks for thanks for doing this. We appreciate you guys uh, coming on, and we'll see you in Indianapolis. Thanks yeah. for having us. See you soon. Yep. We'll we'll, soon. we'll see we'll see those two cheering plenty at the NCAA championships in Indianapolis coming up next week. Again, that's it for this week's edition of Off Deck. I'm David Reeder. Thanks everyone for watching.